The second most common complaint that I hear from iPhone users is that they're running low on space. Perhaps you've had your phone for a while now, you don't want to upgrade just yet, but you really need to free up a bit of your iPhone's internal storage. Your iPhone is actually pretty capable of doing this for itself, but that said, if you're really running low, there are definitely some things that you can do. So in this video, I'll show you how to identify how much space you're currently using, what you're using it on, and share some real methods for freeing up some of that valuable internal storage. Okay, let's get into it. First things first, you're going to want to establish how much storage you're currently using, how much you have available to you, and get a breakdown of what the used storage comprises of. To do this, we're going to head into settings, then choose general, and then choose iPhone storage. This is the main information that we're interested in up at the top, where your phone will do some calculations before giving you a breakdown of all the information that we need. Now, I do just want to point out, because if I don't, someone will mention it in the comments. Yes, I'm aware that I've got loads of space on this phone. So if your phone looks like this, good news, you don't have a storage problem. I'm using my phone purely for illustrative purposes, and the method for clearing out space is the same regardless. As you can see, your phone breaks your storage out into five categories, apps, iOS, photos, media, and system data. iOS is exactly what it sounds like. It's the part of your phone's storage that's needed for iOS, your phone's operating system to be installed. And there's not much you can do about this. If we scroll right down to the bottom of this page, we can see specifically how much of the storage is being taken up by both iOS and system data. System data, if we click into it, is defined by Apple as caches, logs, and other resources currently in use by the system. Apple also state that the value will fluctuate over time, although there are some ways that we can reduce this figure. We'll come to that in just a moment. Let's scroll back up to the top. Like I said a moment ago, I'm aware that this phone, my phone, clearly doesn't have a storage issue, but for the sake of illustration, let's assume it has. Let's assume that this bar is much larger and that I've only got a couple of gigabytes of space remaining. How would I go about clearing out some space? Let's break the answer down bit by bit. The first place I would start might not clear out the most space, but it is still important, and that's to look at your apps. Every app that you install takes up space on your phone, and while many apps only take up a very small amount, some apps can really clog things up for you, so clearing some out is a great starting point. As you scroll down this list, you'll notice that the apps are listed in the order of how much storage they're taking up, and there's a couple of ways that I would use this information here. The first is to look at the date that you last used an app. For example, Lyft. I installed that when my wife and I were on holiday in the US. We don't have Lyft over here in the UK, and so this app is essentially useless to me, and it's taken up over 300 megabytes of space, so I would delete it. To do that, tap on it and choose Delete App. Note that you could offload the app if you wanted to, which is where the storage used by the app itself will be freed up, but any documents associated with it will be kept. Essentially, this is just your iPhone removing the app, but retaining its data, so that if you want to use it again, you just tap on it and your phone will re-download it from the cloud. It's not a feature I use very often, to be honest, but it is there if you want it. But this is where I would start. I would work through this list and perhaps be a bit brutal about what apps I have that I just don't have a need for anymore. There are apps on here that I've not touched in more than six months, and they're really just taking up unnecessary space on my phone. Remember, anything that you want to download again at a later date, you can. You just head to the App Store and download them from there. So whatever your storage situation on your iPhone is, there's probably gonna come a time where you're going to want some kind of external storage. And if that's the case, you should look at the T7 range by Samsung, who are sponsoring this video. The T7 range of SSDs are well known for being reliable and fast, and Samsung currently offer three varieties to cover pretty much all of your needs. The entire T7 range is light and pocket-sized, delivering sequential read-write speeds of up to 1050 megabytes per second and 1000 megabytes per second respectively, making the T7 almost twice as fast as the previous T5 model. The drives have a sophisticated dynamic thermal guard solution, so no need to worry about them overheating, even if you're really pushing them, and at 58 grams in weight and being the size of a typical credit card, you can take them with you pretty much anywhere. All the drives can be secured with an AES 256-bit encrypted password, although if security is really crucial for you, opt for the T7 Touch, which gives the added protection of a built-in fingerprint reader. 
But then, if your number one concern is a drive that's physically the most capable it can be, consider the T7 Shield. It's everything great about the T7, but wrapped in this rubber protective layer, giving you IP65 rated protection against water and dust, as well as making it drop proof for up to three meters. All of the drives come in a range of colors and storage sizes, and you can pick your own up by clicking the link in the description of this video. Another way that I would use the iPhone storage page of settings is to look for apps that are mysteriously large. What I mean by that is, are there any apps where you would logically expect them to be quite small, but they're actually taking up loads of space? If yes, there's probably an opportunity for you to free up space. For example, a game like Call of Duty Mobile takes up, according to the apps page on the App Store, two and a half gigabytes, so I would expect that to be quite large. But an app like Insta360, the companion app for Insta360's cameras, only requires around 700 megabytes, yet on my phone it's taken up much more than that. If we tap into the app in the storage page of settings, you can see this for yourself. Now the Insta360 app is a companion app. You use it for downloading footage from the Insta360 cameras to your phone, and then you'd usually save that footage into your camera roll. But because of this, it's easy to forget that you've got footage sat in the app. So good practice would be to head into the Insta360 app and remove any footage in there. I won't show you this because this is gonna be different for all of the different apps out there, and there are potentially hundreds of them, but if you've got a DJI app or maybe a GoPro app, it's definitely gonna be worth taking a look. Another major culprit for this is streaming apps like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, any streaming app that allows you to download content for offline viewing. Maybe you downloaded a load of films and series to watch on the plane when you went on holiday, but then forgot to get rid of them when you got back. Have a look for these apps here in that list, and if you notice a particularly large storage number associated with any of them, head into the relevant app and start clearing out your downloads. The music app on the iPhone allows you to download music to listen to later offline, and if you tap into that, you can see specifically which audio you've got downloaded and could start to have a clear out. Spotify is another popular app worth mentioning. Obviously, a lot of people use it, and a lot of people understandably download media to their phone using Spotify, but you need to remove this media from within the Spotify app. If you open Spotify, then choose settings, then choose storage, you can see a breakdown of what's going on with your Spotify storage. It's a bit weird. Here it gives you a breakdown of storage overall on the phone rather than just Spotify. It makes it seem more extreme at first than it actually is. But if you do have downloads, you can either remove them manually or use the remove all downloads button to get rid of them, thereby freeing up space. As you can no doubt imagine, photos and videos that you've captured will make up a sizable chunk of the storage you're using on your device. When you tap into photos from the iPhone storage settings page, you can see that Apple don't give you much to work with. I can just see how much space my library is taken up, nothing more. If you then head into the photos app, you'll notice that you can't actually sort by size. You can only sort by the date that the photos and videos were captured. My somewhat cynical, but I reckon accurate take on this is that Apple don't want you to be able to sort by size because Apple don't actually want you to do too much managing of photos and videos on your devices. Ultimately, the more photos and videos you have, the more likely you are to need to rely on a service like iCloud. And so Apple would no doubt prefer users who take loads of pictures and videos on their phones without thinking too much about storage. You can see this for yourself when you head to Apple's support page, where their recommendations are to first check your storage usage, but then immediately turn to iCloud to help with your storage. Using iCloud is probably your best solution in fairness. If you want to do this, head into settings, tap on your name up at the top of the screen, then choose iCloud, then choose photos. In here, you would enable iCloud Photos and choose Optimize iPhone Storage so that your phone will look to only store full res versions of your photos and videos locally when it has the space to do so, otherwise it will store them in the cloud instead. Alternatively, if iCloud really isn't for you, you could consider pulling photos and videos from your phone and storing them in an alternative cloud backup or putting them on a physical drive of some sort. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, why not consider subscribing to my newsletter, The Proper Weekly? I talk about some tech news from that week, share some behind the scenes of what's going on here on the channel, as well as a tip for a product in the Apple ecosystem. I send the newsletter out each Friday, it's free to sign up, and the sign up link is in the description of this video. 
Back in the iPhone storage section of your settings menu, another common culprit that's worth taking a look at is messaging apps. Here in the UK, WhatsApp is unfortunately the most commonly used messaging app, so that's the one that I've got taken up space. But for you, this could be Apple's own messaging app, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, or whatever. If I tap into WhatsApp as an example, you can see that the app only requires just over 100 megabytes of space, yet more than two gigabytes of space on my phone is devoted to WhatsApp. This would be a great place for me to start when it comes to clearing up space. For WhatsApp, open the app, then go to settings, then storage and data, then manage storage. WhatsApp do make this a bit confusing, but essentially you've got large media items up at the top, items that have been forwarded many times underneath, and then the media from chats underneath that. You can then work through this, deleting what you like. I would also recommend going back a page and ensuring that auto download is switched off for everything so that you're not getting bombarded with media that's automatically sent and downloaded to your phone. Apple do at least make this a bit easier with their own messages app. In iPhone storage, you can tap into messages and see a breakdown of where the storage is being used. You can then choose to delete photos, videos, or even full messages if there are any in there that you don't need anymore that would help you free up some space. Back on the iPhone storage page of settings, and you'll notice that one of the more ambiguous labels here is system data, which is separate from iOS. This is constantly fluctuating. It's essentially space that your phone needs to operate and deliver the best user experience to you. Some of this is unavoidable. If you want a good iPhone experience, you need to accept that your phone will need some of your storage to be able to deliver you that experience, but there are still things you can tweak here. Your web browser cache probably isn't one of the biggest culprits when it comes to using up large amounts of storage on your iPhone. I'd definitely look at all the other areas first. That said, it's still worth knowing how to clear it out at the very least. Head to settings, then Safari, and then scroll down until you see clear history and website data. Now obviously, there are gonna be negative implications to this. Any sites that you'd allowed to keep you logged in, for example, you're gonna to have to log back in when you visit them now, but you might decide that the trade-off is worth it to gain a bit of storage back. If you head into settings, then messages, and scroll down to where it says keep messages, you might wanna consider changing this from forever to one year or 30 days, especially if you text a lot. Those message threads do take up quite a bit of space, so a clear out might not be a bad idea. The Siri voices that you have on your phone can also be taking up more space than you might expect, and if you've auditioned or used different voices before in the past, it's possible that there's files here that you'd be better off getting rid of. Head into settings, then accessibility, then spoken content, then voices. If I tap into English, which is the language that I use for Siri, you can see that I've got one stored for Daniel, and that's the voice that I normally use, but if I also tap into Kate, you can see that I've got 150 megabytes dedicated to a voice for her also. You can tap edit up at the top and then use the delete options to remove those voice downloads from your phone. Not a huge amount, 150 megabytes each, but if you're not using it, that's space you could claw back. The final option, the nuclear option I guess, if you feel like you're wasting too much time trying to free up storage on your phone, you might actually be quicker resetting your phone to factory settings and rebuilding it as a brand new device. Doing this will obviously remove all the apps from your phone, but keep in mind you can then go to the App Store and download the main ones that you want. Before you do anything like this, ensure that you've got cloud backups of anything that you really care about, because as I say, you will lose the originals, so things like photos and videos. If you're not using iCloud, ensure that you've downloaded these and stored them on an external drive, or ensure that you're using an alternative cloud backup solution. You would then go to settings, then general, then transfer or reset iPhone, and then choose arrays or content and settings, and then follow the instructions to do this. So there you go, that's how you figure out how much storage you're using on your iPhone and some tips for how to free up space. Could definitely be worth spending some time doing this, especially as the iPhone 14s are just around the corner. You wanna make sure you're not buying more phone storage than you need. What about you? What makes up the majority of space on your phone? drop me a comment and let's talk about it. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.